Good day, colleagues. I'm giving you a brief as you prepare for an upcoming right shop on the 29th Friday and 30th Saturday, September, where we are going to complete our DDDs or detailed design documents as we prepare to fast track the transformation of our programs in COVAB onto the Makere University e-learning environment platform. So our first tip answers the question, what is the purpose of the DDD or the detailed design document? Let me look for a pointer. I've got it, thank you. So when we look at the traditional methods of teaching, as teacher stands in front of the class, <coughs> sorry, the teacher stands in front of the class and speaks. And we assume on the other hand that the students are listening attentively, attentively and learning is taking place. But we also know that we have some students who've not attended class, they're out there in the marketplace for various reasons, I've depicted them as standing in the window over here. So with the traditional methods of teaching, the lecturer is the only one speaking. The lecturer knows almost everything. There's no discussion, perhaps because time doesn't permit. Also perhaps because the class numbers are large and they cannot permit discussion. And after the lecture, we give an assignment or a test to assess the learning that has taken place or to assess the learning we assumed happened during the class. But if we were to ask the students the view, I think we'd get something different. Some would say, well, it was boring, repetitive, predictable. Others might have felt isolated. Others were asleep. And because of all of these events, someone is resigned to getting an F in that subject. So what we see with traditional learning is that the teacher is responsible for the learning of the student. But this student happened. We should allow the student to be responsible for their own learning at whatever level of education they are. For this to happen, we need to look at student-centered learning. The following pictures depict student-centered learning. It can be discussion between two students. It can be a discussion between a teacher and a student. It can be a bigger group discussion where the teacher is involved or maybe the students are leading this discussion and the teacher is not involved. With student-centered learning, we are giving the students the opportunity to own their learning and the teacher is now not responsible for the entire learning of the students. So student-centered learning would be actually involving four pillars. One is the choice, the student makes a choice to gain wisdom, empowerment, or mastery of a subject. Secondly, they agree that they're going to learn. So when they do this, they're going to own the curriculum. We need to give the students this curriculum. The students will be able to track their learning using learning maps provided by the lecturer. The student should be able to perform some self-assessment to find out how much they know. And this self-assessment is going to involve the student, you know, asking themselves, how am I doing? How do I know? What are the gaps? And what are the next steps when I identify the gaps? How do I move in to close the gaps? And as teachers, we should provide some interface or some guide which the student can follow to be able to do this self-assessment before the exams. And lastly, when the students have mastered the subject, they can now contribute, share, collaborate in class with other students and show us what they've learned. And in, do so in, in so doing, sorry, 
they will acquire other values. So we're going to look at these four values in this short brief. The first one of choice is simple. The students enroll for the subject, they opt to come to class, they choose to join the learning platform Moelle, they choose to join a discussion group, to attend practicals, to follow up the learning concepts in the field, farm or hospital attachments. The choice is theirs. You don't have much control over this. But when it comes to learning, we need to guide them. We need to show them where they can start from. Because it looks like a jungle out there. So we provide the context. Timetable. The deputy principal shares the timetable with us, the teaching staff, and the heads of department. And we pass this on to the students. They need a course overview with the aims, and they need a list of topics that can be covered. We should be able to provide these to the students in a study guide or on the Muele teaching interface. Now, what comes next in guiding the students on how to proceed is giving them learning outcomes. A set of a set of competencies that they'll get when they study a particular course or a particular topic. So the learning outcomes can be topic and can be course wide or module wide or they can be topic specific. And by learning outcomes, the statement we give the students is by the end of this course you will be able to do A, B, C, D. And these course-wide learning outcomes are usually in the curriculum, but we give them to the students in the learning guide. Now we can also go a step ahead and set topic-specific learning outcomes, which will guide the learning of the student as they tackle a particular topic. By the end of this topic, you should be able to describe the basic structure and physiology of the red blood cells and white blood cells and plasma proteins and explain their importance, blah, blah, blah. So in so doing, I mean, we give this to the students on Muele and in a study guide, and in so doing, we have given the students the responsibility of the curriculum, we've given them the responsibility of owning it and seeing it to fruition or completion. Now, if I can leave this interface, I can show you what happens on Muele. And this is a course that has gone online on Umuele. We are working on it now. It's a BLT 2120 Hematology and Blood Transfusion Science for the academic year 2023-24. And as we see, we have already posted the learning guide for the student to follow up. And we've also given them a module outline if we can look at the study guide that we've posted on the student, I've already downloaded it beforehand. To save some time. So this is a study guide that we're going to develop as we make our DDDs. And I'm going to go to the page that shows you the course outcome and the learning out and the intended learning outcomes. So this is all an introduction to the course that is online. And we start with a welcome message. This is all the welcome message. 
We've given our students the course overview, what to expect in the course. They're just going to learn basic microscopic structures of cells, the functions, explain concepts and principles, discuss assays, interpret results. We have the course-wide learning outcomes here. By the end of this course, the student should be able to describe physiology and function of blood cells and explain their importance. They should be able to discuss different assays. They should have skills to prepare, conduct, and evaluate the assays. They should be able to analyze these assays. So you can see we've empowered the students with the curriculum to follow as their learning is guided. As said before, we gave them the module outline. And this is the module outline. Just the list of topics that will be taught with serial numbers, which is easy for the students to follow. Now, let me go back to our PowerPoint presentation. Sorry about that. Um, sorry about that. Let me get to the right slide that we left at. I believe this was the slide. Yes, we've given the student the context. They have the timetable, they have a course overview, they have a list of topics, they know the learning outcomes or the set of competencies that they're going to go away with after going through our course. And that is guiding their learning so the student can take responsibility of the curriculum. So this was an example of intended learning outcomes on the Muele interface, but now it's for a specific topic. So we are looking at topic specific learning outcomes. The title of the topic, let me get a laser pointer. Thank you. The title of the topic is anemia and RBC's indices. Now, the values addressed in this topic are supported by course-wide learning outcome one. And we've already seen the course-wide learning outcome one in the study guide. Now, the topic-specific intended learning outcomes for the topic called anemia and blood cell indices would be by the end of the topic, you, you the student, you'll be able to define anemia, explain the causes and classification of the different types of anemia, use red blood cell indices to describe anemia. So the student is well guided on what to expect. Now that the student has got the context, we are going to give connections to the students so that they can apply this context to the lecture materials. The lecture materials can be PowerPoint slides, sometimes they're recorded, and IODEL can help us with these recordings. They may be PowerPoint readings, where they read and get concepts. We may get open education resources, pre-recorded from other universities, like this on differential counts was got from the St. Louis University. Another still on total leukocyte counts was got from the CDC Educational Library. Still on the connections, we can look for open, other open learning resources like this database from the University of Cornell, which is free for everyone. Library resources, which can be digitized and appear on Moele to help our students. We've got practical demonstrations, hospital attachments, and now the learner can construct and guide their own learning using the intended learning outcomes specified in the, in the study guide and on the Mowele platform. Also referring to the aims 
of the course and the course outline. So the responsibility of learning is no longer in the hands of us lecturers. The students have taken entire responsibility of the learning. So let's look at the next step. The learning doesn't occur just without any guidelines and deadlines. We need to provide conditions that will ensure that the learning occurs in a specific time and during a specific period. We shall come to that later. But first, how will the learner know that they have learned? How will the learner know if there are any gaps? How will the learner know how to close in on the gaps of, that they have identified? This will occur during reflection. We allow the students a period of time to reflect. There is usually self-assessment using study questions or quizzes on Moele. We encourage peer-to-peer -peer discussion among our learners. We even have a WhatsApp group where they can post any questions relating to the learning that is going on. <coughs> Sorry. And anyone is free to respond. It can be the lecturer or it can even be fellow learners answering their fellow learners. And the students are learning by this peer-to-peer -peer discussion. We give them discussion questions to discuss in specific and strategic groups. And the students learn more from each other. And the students present this group work in class. Here, I think I was sitting around this place here. The students now are no longer up asleep or abstract, thinking that the topic is so abstract or isolated. They are the ones teaching themselves. And you can see the PowerPoint slides they have made are actually very good. And this we still get another chance to learn in the practicals. So we have to provide conditions. We have to provide conditions if the learning is going to take place in a specific time. So one of the conditions we provide as lecturers is attendance. They have to attend the learning. We can take roll call in class, but Muwele can also take the roll call for us. We have group leaders who record the contribution of each member. We, have, uh, we can do roll calls in practical demos. When we give them activities to do, the activities are surrounded by deadlines, which they have to adhere to. And the learning management system can cut you off if you don't submit your assignment in time. And the topics on the learning management system have got time periods given to the students within which they are supposed to complete particular learning. So let's go back to the Mowele interface and see this. This is our Mwale interface and this is our course and you're going to see for each topic for each topic these are the reading materials for each topic there is a date during which they are supposed to come online and work on that particular session there is a date guiding their learning so during week one and two from the 31st august to the 5th september they are doing all of these topics week two now they'll be doing this group work week three they're doing another topic the topics are being given dates and the timetable stipulates the time so let's look at the learning interface I wish to extend my session. It's been kind enough. So this is one of the learning sessions on Muwele. It has the content. The content is topic 1.2, blood smears, which we have indicated very well in our outline that is on Muwele. Topic 2, 
blood 1.2 blood smears so the students can follow this very easily the learning outcomes for topic 2 um, 1.2 is supported by the course wide learning outcome or ELO 2 and the course wide learning outcomes 2 is given to the students in the study guide number 2 discuss different assays manual and automated to analyze the different constituents of blood and that's what they're doing using smears to analyze the blood now we've come down to the topic of smears 1.2 blood smears and it has got <clears throat> topic specific learning outcomes when they complete this topic they the students not i the lecturer they, the students, should be able to describe the uses of blood smear, explain the techniques, and identify the underlying principles, explain staining, and topic 1.2 has got different parts. One is thin and thick smear preparation, Part two, staining. Now, when you type the next button, you're going to go to the interface where they actually did, let me extend the session, where they actually, where the learning actually takes place. All of this is the learning. The student has looked at these um, videos and we assume learning is taking place. They've looked at all of these videos, assuming learning is taking place. Now they're going to come to the part where they can look at study questions and do some self-assessment to find out whether the learning has taken place and the students should be able to gauge from themselves whether they have learned or not. So let's go back to our PowerPoint presentation. We provided the conditions. This is an example of the conditions where I was showing you an interface with activities and deadlines. We give our activities on Moele deadlines. And this is an example of the activity, which is self-study questions where they are assessing themselves to see whether learning has taken place. This is an interface with dates to guide their learning. So after this has taken place, now the students are masters. We assume they have reflected. They now know and now they're ready to contribute in class. They should be able to share what they've learned in a discussion group. The all students all have discussion groups. They should be able to present the work discussed on Moele or in front of the class and they should be able to mentor their fellow students as they conduct these discussions. All of this will help them check whether they've achieved learning to the mastery level. You'll forgive me for these typing errors. So here I just captured the students in a discussion group and you can see this student is explaining to his fellow students and in doing so, he's mastered this, the subject. Here, the students are presenting what they learned on leukocyte types and different, differentiating them from uh, the different kinds. So, is a student presenting, not me, the lecturer. I was seated around here. And you can see they're all attentive. No one is sleeping, actually enjoying the subject. So... Ayadel tells us, I mean, why should we prepare DDD? It ensures that the efforts of everyone involved are directed in the same direction and purpose. If we develop this DDD at the level of a course, at the level of a particular module, then all of the lecturers on that module have got the same understanding of the course objectives and learning outcomes and they all contribute they all feel they're part of the teaching 
The cost structure, navigation, and design, including the audios, are documented. It's going to guide constructive alignment, which we're going to see in the next tip. And it's proof that all key stakeholders have agreed to the vision, objective, and learning outcomes in a particular course. And it ensures that the course stays on track and achieves the purpose for which it is designed. It's easy for peer review at college level, departmental level, or even at the level of National Council of Higher Learning and Education when we want to prove that we are conducting the right teaching. Thank you. Hope to see you in the next tips that we are going to share. Let me stop the recording.